Hey, everybody. Welcome to Don't Make Me Come Back There. We are a funny podcast about family. My name is Dustin Nickerson. I'm a stand-up comedian, the host of the aforementioned podcast. And alongside me in our state-of-the-art recording studio in downtown La Mesa, California, Public downtown. Square Coffee, downtown, downtown is my, my lovely wife uh, and co-host hey. with an empty Gibraltar cup and Melissa Nickerson and our producer, Andy Lara. Hello. Cheers, everybody, to us. Cheers to us. To them. Mm-hmm. Mm. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. Thank you, everybody, for it tuning in. It was July. In. It was July. <laughs> we have so much to talk about today. Yeah. We are going to talk about our son getting his license. We are going to talk about seeing the band Switchfoot, which I think I listened to around the time I got my license. Uh, and then we're going to give just an overall Northwest recap nod nod mm-hmm. it's fitting that we're going to be talking about the northwest as i have a plant that is just touching my arm yeah i'm getting getting touched uh right you see how that the yeah, that's touching right uh, mm-hmm. right there that is uh, it's touching me too yeah that is yeah. uh that is uh whew, it's it very aggressive just like the health you see how uh you see how this? that's touching your arm right now yeah when we were 17 <laughs> i would have lost my mind if i could have done that to you, if I could have just touched. If you were the plant, that that high on your arm, whoo! <laughs> that close to the top half of the top half, whoo! That lucky plant, that lucky plant, that'll make you grow. <laughs> so it's, we're uh, we're in a weird spot, everybody. We're uh, we're in a two and a half day stay in between two ten day stays. We're home recording two pods. Today is July eighteenth. You're listening to this July nineteenth or after, <sighs> and we're in it. Mm-hmm. Our like yep. I said, our kid got our license today. Um, we have uh, we had like seventy two less than more like sixty hours to do laundry and pack in between big trips, and we just Pick up we the just cat to had drop off oh the, cat. the poor cats. <laughs> The poor cats. We we boarded them, and which we think is the good thing to do. I just it's it's we got a lot to talk about, and we'll get to it all. <laughs> But thank you, everybody, for tuning in. It really means a lot to us. Uh, shout out to July is going great. We hope it yeah. is. We really uh, mm-hmm. quick love to the patrons who were um, on the patron Zoom hang yesterday. Yeah, thanks for doing that. If you guys are and unfamiliar just, yeah. with Patreon, it's a way you can give a little more to the pod and get a little more. Uh, and that includes things like discount on new merch that's they've seen and that's going to be uh, mm-hmm. debuting here shortly publicly. It's only on at live shows right now. On the website. On yep. the website. The website. And, um, and Zoom Hangs, which we did yesterday. And uh, I want to give a, the uh, some of them get meet and greets at show. Allison mm-hmm. drove out from Phoenix with the crew, said uh, hi in San Diego. Carrie and Dan, you were both at... Uh, the Boston show. So thanks for meeting and greeting. I think, uh, I think it's going to be Courtney this weekend is doing the meet and greet. Um, in Atlanta. In, um, um, yeah. oh, yeah, she's going to be in Atlanta, not yeah. in Nashville. Right. Mm-hmm. So there you go. Thanks everybody. Good stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. also upcoming dates, uh, this weekend. Uh, if you, uh, if you're in the Nashville area, get those tickets. There's still some available, at least for Friday. Saturday's almost sold out. So, uh, 21st and 22nd in Nashville. And then the 28th, we added a second show in Atlanta at the Earl. So just take us to that late show. August, we're doing, uh, San Jose, Fresno, Sacramento, Omaha, Milwaukee, Minneapolis. Second show added in Minneapolis, Tulsa, Addison, San Antonio. September is Houston, Oklahoma City, Austin, Phoenix, Oh, I moved all that around. Phoenix, okay, and then I'm going to take a few months off from the headlining tour. And then December, Phoenix, Columbus, Cleveland, Cincinnati, Pittsburgh. January, we added Kansas City. February, we added uh, Grand Rapids. On sale this week will be Portland, Philly, and wait for it, Buffalo. On sale soon, almost finalized, New York, working on Denver, working on Vancouver, working on Rhode Island, and then that's it. I think that's it. I think I might I might I might breathe and then I can rest and watch the sunrise on a grateful universe. Perfect. Thanos. Yep. Thanos. Three, 316. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. You guys aren't familiar with that. So, anyways, thanks for everyone that came out to the Tacoma shows. Those are a lot of fun. Uh, it was no joke. It was the uh, it was the side room of a breakfast joint. Uh, I did Tacoma Comedy Club. <laughs> Adam Norwest books a lot of great, or runs a bunch of, he started Tacoma Comedy Club, open Spokane, he's got Bricktown, there's a lot of clubs that I work there, Louisville Comedy Club, Fort Summit, I think is what that mount. he opened one in the Summit area of Fort Wayne, Indiana, I don't remember that one, anyways, a lot of great clubs, he, uh, during COVID, they opened uh, like a takeout breakfast restaurant. Yeah. And they actually bought the building and stuff. And then they have a like side room that he's like, oh, this is the now the small area for a comedy club here. It's like a hundred seater. So we did a bunch of shows there. Sold them all out. Thank you, Tacoma. Hometown shows are always weird because they'll people will be like, hey, I know you from from junior high wrestling. And I was like, we're on the team. He's like, no, we wrestled against each other. Like me and you are like. <laughs> No, you wrestled against my friend. I was just sitting on the other side of the mat, and I was there. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't recall that. So we were in the same building <laughs> yeah. 25 years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't recall that specific interaction. <laughs> Are you- I was going to say, you got the nachos in line next to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we were supposed to do some reviews too. <laughs> By the way, uh, thank you also for those of you leaving reviews uh, on uh, Spotify. Listen, yeah. if you listen on mm-hmm. Spotify, you don't even have to write out any words. No words. They won't let you. Just stars. Just stars, baby. Uh-huh. Uh, but if you want to write out some words, you can do so on Apple, which uh, this one we got from uh, Chelsea Diane 15, uh, podcast of the new books, five stars. Listen to this podcast if you want to brag to your friends about how smart you are because you're a podcast listener and podcast of the new books. Boom. All right. And this is a five star one from Mrs. Kingfish. Who gives less than five stars? I may be a late on the review game, but for real, what elder millennial slash zennial wouldn't write this weekly piece of gold with all those five stars? Backseaters, we write at dawn. What will we do till we get there? The most intense mom dad face we can muster. Thank you, Mrs. Kingfish. Really That's appreciate good. you. Yeah. We're in a full summer swing here uh, with the Nickersons. Like mm-hmm. I said, we we have just gotten, we've, whew. I think we're like four-ish weeks in. You know, like yeah. we, we did like a day camp week. We yeah. did a 4th of July week. Yeah. We did, uh, you traveled with Joel. Yeah. yeah. Um, we did a family trip. Yeah, a little work and yeah. family stuff. So yeah, we're just definitely in it. And then our kid got his driver's license mm-hmm. today. So I think we have some friends yeah. in town yeah. uh, that we're hanging out with right now. My experience yeah. is usually around day four of a family vacation, you go, this was a mistake. <laughs> the, Our... For all the money you're spending. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and all the preparations. Yeah. Because we planned this like six months ago. <laughs> yeah, I think around day four, you go, this was a mistake. And then around day six, you go, we'll never... We'll never recover emotionally, financially. <laughs> Around day nine or ten on a trip, you're like, we're not even a family anymore. I don't have one clean piece of laundry no. left. <laughs> this has, this has, this family vacation has torn my family apart. <laughs> We have grown further apart. <laughs> the infrastructure this, yeah. has exploded. There is nothing like a family vacation to rip a family limb from limb, <laughs> just tear us. What was one, what was meant to bring us together has drawn us apart. What mom and dad, <laughs> what mom and dad meant for good, the children have used for evil. <laughs> and then around, around January, about four months later, you go, we should go somewhere this summer. Don't do it. <laughs> Your family's happy at home. Your family, your kids love their house. You got enough space. They love their friends. They have everything there. You got good Wi-Fi at home. The hotel doesn't have good Wi-Fi. <laughs> Why did you do it? Why do you do it? To have these special, you know what? A family, people, this is this is the crap that parents and grandparents and stuff, they, they shove down your throat. They go, family vacations, they create memories. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they do create things you will remember. Pleasant memories? No. We didn't say that. Yeah. <laughs> You'll remember them. You will remember them. And you will retell them to a therapist 
in about 15 years when you're like- You'll, re- you'll remember seeing your parents at their breaking point. Yes. Uh-huh. And you won't yeah. realize that it was you that broke them mm-hmm. as they tried to help you. As they searched for the AirPod under the van seat <laughs> on a 95, in a 95 degree parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Taking, um, <laughs> taking children on a vacation is like seeing a wild animal caught in a trap and you're trying to save it, but it keeps biting you. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, no, 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 I know that this is your instinct, but I'm trying to help you. I'm trying I'm for you. I'm trying to free you. I'm trying. Quit squirming, turtle. I'm trying to cut you out of this plastic net that you're caught in. Let me save you. Let me help you. Let me bring you joy. And uh, they just yeah. keep snapping. They just the snaps, the snaps. Mm-hmm. Anyways, vacation's going great. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good analogy. It, it, you know, we're trying. We're trying. It's, it is good. Yeah. The, mm-hmm. the, we are back. Summer break, like we are, we really. Like Joel got out, the kids, the girls got out and I got back from a long trip. And Mm -hmm. it was like, we just kind of hit the ground running. The first thing that we did was we went to the San Diego fair, which this is the first time I ever cheated on the Puyallup fair. So growing up in Washington state, the Puyallup fair, especially South Puget Sound where I'm from is like a big thing. It's the biggest fair this side of the Mississippi. It's a big old fair. It's bigger than any fair in Texas. You heard that correct. Like it is a big old hickory dickory fair. It is, it is a whole to do. This is the first fair that I've ever gone to uh, with our kids and not that isn't the Puyallup Fair. So it took us 12 years to go. Now, Andy, yeah. I'm sure you mm-hmm. frequented the Del Mar. What's it called? Is it the San Diego Fair? What's it called? You know what? I have not frequented. The, mm. I haven't even been yet because I've only lived yeah. here for a couple of years, but I used to go to the OC Fair all the time. Okay. You know, in Orange okay. County because, okay. you know, naturally. Yeah. Well, well the Del Mar. That was your fair. Was yeah. Fair. Yeah. The Del, Mar, mm-hmm. the Del Mar Fairgrounds has one big thing going for it. What do you think it is? Speakeasies. I know that much. Oh, I didn't think the speakeasies. Well, I, I did I see know. those on the map. <laughs> oh, I yeah, didn't know. I did see those on the map. Uh, uh-huh. This is something that maybe a SoCal kid doesn't fully appreciate. It's on the ocean. Yeah. Fairs aren't on the ocean. <laughs> this yeah, is they're it. in a farm, you know. They're in the farmland. They're, yeah, they're flat ground. They're inland. It's on the ocean, which is pretty cool. So the fair was a lot of fun, but we, okay, we half watched Switchfoot at the fair. In which, the, a couple months ago, we talked about you guys might want to go, and we were like, mm-hmm. oh, maybe we could all go, and oh, yeah. we would enjoy that. We would. And then we, you know, just waited and waited and saw what was going on. Yeah. So Switchfoot was the day before the last day of the fair. Tell me about- we Closed the fair on yeah, July 4th. Yeah. We Let's, went July 3rd. I want to get into that, and we'll mm-hmm. tell that story. Andy, tell me about your relationship with Switchfoot as a, you know, as a music guy, but also as a, uh, you know- uh, Switchfoot was like a diet rock band, mm-hmm. at, like mm-hmm. kind of at the era of like all the bands I was like really into. Yeah. Um, so I just didn't, and I was like in, I grew up more inland, so kind of the surfy- Yeah kind of like rock thing it just felt too glossy for me yeah. like it, like MTV was firing but it was also like the calling and SR 71 and American hi-fi and right. Avril Lavigne and it they kind of to me my mind fell into that yeah. camp yeah. Mm-hmm. which I call the runk genre which is like rock oh, wow. bands trying to be punk oh okay. yeah. I so, thought they were trying to be punk well they probably weren't yeah but I but mean you were young I, I was assimilated that's how yeah. I assimilated yeah. them because mm-hmm. it sounded like that when I was listening it sounded to like, like people were listening to it yeah and so you couldn't enjoy it I could not I was yeah. like Ugh. they had a radio hit <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Hits people like this. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. <laughs> you know, do they smoke cigarettes out in the front of the venue? Like, yeah. you know, more excited about the openers in the headline? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I actually leave during the headliner. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate that about, that about you. Yeah. yeah. We, mm-hmm. Listen, Switchfoot, I. I started going to church in like, let's say I graduated in 2003, 2000 ish. And when did Beautiful Letdown come out? 2001? Yeah. I mean, they were everything. Because I was like, 
I was a Seattle kid that like, you gotta get rid of your secular music. I'm like, yeah, I'm not gonna do that. Uh, oh, you're burn your CD. Yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna yeah. do any of that. Yeah. And then Switchfoot came out, and I was like, oh, this is pretty good, actually. Like, this is very, very good. Like, and they were, I didn't even, was there, but like, they were the thing for youth group kids because like Jars of Clay got Remember? played a little bit on the radio and then like yeah. Switchfoot was a legit hit band. They were like a huge band and just kind of kept having hits. And so we um, lo- love Switchfoot, love, love Switchfoot. And so we see Switchfoot at the fair in San Diego and it's, <laughs> it's so so what the way that the fairgrounds works out is you can kind of like li- you can hear the band without seeing them you can't see them you can see side stage a little bit yeah you can yeah. kind of peek in but you can full hear them yeah, so yeah. we go to this kind mm-hmm. of side stage backstage area can hear everything watching the sun go down on the water with the ferris wheel behind us yeah and we're in sand so we're playing tag in sand with our kids, with our five kids, and then you or, sit down on us. a bench and you're like, "Oh my gosh, I'm at youth camp again." <laughs> Andy, <laughs> all the Switchfoot songs are playing in the air. It's we're having a moment, you know. Uh, you know, your love is a symphony. Remember, and you? I literally. <laughs> I picked up some sand, Andy, and I let it run through my hands. <laughs> but in a meaningful way. In the most meaningful, the most way. meaningful <laughs> way. Like show me the unmeaningful way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I Well, just like a, I, the youth pastor analogy. But my yeah. children are playing behind me. Oh. And I'm like, what kind of moment is this? Where did this come from? <laughs> Love was, that. It was very funny. And I thought, I had this thought, I will never use the word deconstruct because I don't like that. I don't like terms. But I had this joke thought I was like, if I ever went down the full deconstruction path, you could deconstruct me down to a grain of sand. And that grain of sand is going to be switch foot. I will <laughs> never, I will never leave switch foot. I'm in forever. I'm ride or die with switch foot. <laughs> That's awesome. I have a, I have a juxtaposed punk experience in the probably the exact same time you were having that moment because I went to the punk rock museum yeah. over the weekend in Vegas or last week in Vegas That's and right. they have a jam room where they have the instruments of bands and that kind of thing. And so right. I was really into the band Strung Out. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Huge yeah, yeah. fan. And they had Rob's guitar from Strung Out. Yeah. And I used to be my one of my first bands in high school was called Mind of My Own, which came from a strung out song. Right. And I sat down and I was like, and then I played that song and I'm like, this existential circle right now could not be more. <laughs> like I'm playing a song from my favorite band on their guitar. Yeah. From my namesake band. And it was like, and everything is is oh, in the world. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Joel. Joel got in the Joel. This is a thing that like kids have right now that maybe I don't remember having, but they're all into like, what is your first drive song? What song are you gonna play for your first drive? And Joel's asked me that like a million times. Like I was like, I don't, I don't know. I was, I wasn't. We had CDs. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Whatever, whatever was yeah. track one on the CD that I was putting on. I have no idea what my first drive song was. I mean, if I was sixteen. The year was 2001. I don't even remember. I mean, I gosh, the Green Album came out then. I'd listened to that a decent amount when my sophomore year. Uh, I think for me, I think it was actually Eminem's by Blink One Eighty Two. Oh, there you go. Sure. Yeah. I yeah. Think for me, that was it. Because like that's I I loved that song right before I was able to drive. Right. And so mm-hmm. I think the idea yeah. of being able to drive and listen to that song was just yeah. Well, Joel I didn't have a it. choice because he his the car that he has for us just as a radio. So he's like, <laughs> that's why when I Facetimed him, he just got his license he's like green day came on and i was like okay he's like holiday i was like that's it huh there you go there, I mean, that was your drive song that's it that's as good as any i guess you know with the uh they do the bleeped out bridge now you know uh because <laughs> you know censorship am i right cancel culture these days these days it's coming for all of us you know how many, i think you just got canceled right now you know how many comedy careers it's ruined <laughs> slash giving them a bigger following than they've ever had before <laughs> I, I got canceled 
Now I'm selling out theaters. Yeah, it seems pretty rough. I'm so sorry for you. <laughs> seems pretty rough. But anyways, the uh, my our son got his license today. And you have done that. You have worked so diligently to get. It's so hard to get a license in California. It's hard to get a license. It's, so it's hard. very hard to get a license these yeah. days. And it's very, very hard in the. Like DMVs are bad. The DMV in California is it's like a it's hell. It's on a, it is just it's bureaucrat. I bet we got there at eight a.m. Well, like yeah. seven thirty. Yeah, and there was a line like wrapped around the yeah. building. Oh yeah, it and- is. It is much easier to get into hell than to get. <laughs> Into... So much easier to crash a car than yeah, and also the same. Your license. And also the same, yeah, yeah. The DMV is like you are hell, but you have heaven's standards. <laughs> <laughs> like you're the narrow path, but to the bad destination. The DMV really it's should be a lot aware. more welcoming, <laughs> yeah. considering how awful of an experience it is. But talk about knowing that you have a product that people need. They the just have man. to go. What a flex. What a flex. <laughs> Absolutely. It's like it's easier to get Taylor Swift tickets than it is to get your license in California. It's a real pain. You ever had to get something renewed in the state of California? You're screwed. Through a website? Yeah. 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 It's but all, so it's all you Uber. so you've started this is like This is like since October. Yeah. We have been working on this. Mm-hmm. And it just like to because you don't just sit down in your high school, you know, like a uh, portable, you know, yeah. and sit through driver's ed. You have to be like, "Okay, so if Every Sunday you did three lessons online, then you could have your written, you know, certificate by December 1st. Right, right. You know, like, and I can, I guess that what I'm seeing now is just like, I have to do this two more times. (laughs) And, you know, your firstborn just sometimes has a little bit more of that, like, check the boxes and uh rise to the standard oh my gosh yeah no it's gonna be like to it, get the girls to focus to study to pay attention i just said focus pay attention <laughs> practice 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 um so it's overwhelming yeah, yeah it's overwhelming and and then like all of a sudden it, there's just all these new things we have to think about mm-hmm. you know like the air tags on the keys and the life 360 and well, what i realized uh, yeah just, like all of it you're like in curfew yeah and i face, get a print, yeah some more keys we fast you know, we facetime joel like, today ah, i don't have time to do all that yeah <laughs> we got in here right before we about to record and i facetimed joel and it was when i realized like oh we haven't set up ground rules with the car because i was like does he just think he can drive somewhere today because it's still our car and it's still gas money and he's still our <laughs> kid he's not an independent adult no he still has to no. ask to go places it was actually really fun because when uh, the boys, the, so Joel went out to drive and then another mom's son went out and she talked to me the whole time. Yeah. And she was like, it was her second kid. Okay. She waited till he was a senior. She was like, no, you're not ready. Like mm. if you have to do summer school and like pass your classes, like you're not ready. And right, so she had right. let her firstborn like get it 16, but like waited on her second born. And, and it was, uh, it was just fun cause we're both nervous, mm. but we're like moms. So we're. You know, we're able to. I mean, every parent. It's very fun to watch the parents waiting for their. Right, you have right. to. Yeah, you have to do all the practice with your kid. You have to wait with them while this is they're a strange out there thing. Yeah, because you show up rated, when you show up. You're, you're standing you're, there. You're the only one with a license. <laughs> oh, yeah. like you're showing all the proof of everything. So it's a very, uh, you know, it's a big milestone. It's like when your kids learn to walk or something. Right. Um, but it's like you know you don't get like a certificate. Yeah. Or like yeah. a trophy. Pa- parenting is, yeah. <laughs> Parent, well, you get a kid that can drive himself, and that's yeah, the trophy. Yeah. yeah. No, of course. It's it's great. Yeah. It's great. Parenting and... is, is all these things that, like, <laughs> you don't really know to be nervous about until the moment comes. Like, I, I have not been nervous about Joel driving until today. And now I'm like, oh, gosh, what if he gets in a wreck? <laughs> <laughs> Which is kind of like pregnancy because I have spent nine months like yeah. planning this out. And then when Joel was born, I was like, oh, no. 
that that was like day one, like the shock hit yeah, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so now today, well, I wasn't you know? carrying it. <laughs> I didn't well, have I know. I'm I was not, also like so I'm young. Not, yeah, yeah I, I'm not. I didn't. I should have been more. I told you that the other day. I was like, oh my gosh, if we ever, if we had another kid right now, we would be such good parents. If we, only. If only. But please, no more children. I told you I would be. <laughs> I apologized the other day. I was like, I, I, I was like, I, I'm sorry, I wasn't better during the pregnancies, but I was young and dumb. I just didn't have it in me. I'm much. Now you I know. You would be more supportive. I'm much you, nicer to pregnant women now. I wasn't mean, but I understand more now. Yeah. You know? You've seen more. I know. I guess that's just how Youth it goes. Youth is wasted on the young, yeah. baby. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, at least we're young parents. <laughs> <laughs> I can still jump on a trampoline. <laughs> and we tore down. But, uh, yeah, it is, it's why. It is. You are. When your kid gets your license, you're trading some of your time for some worry, essentially. 100% and money. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well, the money of them, be, their insurance and the stuff. The financial yeah. responsibility has just upped. Yeah. Like, a lot. It is. Yeah. You just, mm -hmm. I just think about how bad Joel is at like walking through an airport and not running <laughs> into people that I'm like, Oh, he has a car now? <laughs> oh, no. But that's why the nine months of prep is, like, good. It's good that you have to do 50 hours with yeah. your parents to get a license. A lot of kids in California just get it at 18. Yeah. Because it costs money and time and stress. Yeah. I think, Yeah, like, my, my immediate logical intuition is, like, I, I, I just won't let my kid get a license unless like they have a job that can make some of their own money. Right. Because it's right. like it just costs something to drive a car, whether it's gas right. or insurance or it's like the, the idea of responsibility and money and driving just has to kind of all yeah. be there a little bit. Right. Like I'm not I'm definitely not the parent to be like, you're 16, you get to drive now. Yeah. Well, the what, here's scary. A, here's a new car. His yeah. what we're paying him to do is take his sisters to school next yeah. year. Because their schools are right next to each other. So, you know, you're like, well, that gives us some time. And as long as you're in sports, you don't have to get a job. But you, there is there is value in having a third driver in the house, for sure. Especially because I travel. Especially with Dustin's sure. schedule. Yep. Oh, I want you just rub that in. Plus, maybe he can start getting up at 5 and taking me to the airports on Wednesdays or Thursdays. <laughs> Rub it in. Why is he so tired at school? Well, he had to take his old man to the airport this morning. <laughs> I did think I was like, that's he's gonna do all the airport runs, and then I was like, I don't want him on the freeway all hour. No, no, you no. Know, no like yeah. he literally is supposed to be off the road eleven to five a.m., so he can't wake up too early to get to the airport. I don't know. It's all terrifying. Let's just leave it at that. I don't want to leave. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very scared. But what I'm here's what I'm looking forward to is, um, I'm. The worst part about your kid learning how to drive is that era where they're in the back seat critiquing your driving. <laughs> Let's talk about you in Washington State, Dustin. Oh man, segue. <laughs> I forgot that Washington State has the slowest, most timid, most passive drivers. I was I was a California driver before I moved down here, and now I'm full aggressive California driver. If you want five cars all going 64 miles per hour, <laughs> I recommend I-5 South <laughs> through Seattle, Washington. <laughs> Drive like you're going somewhere, Seattle. <laughs> go, 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 go. I forgot how slow it they are. It was really entertaining for me. It was, yeah. To watch you so mad at the Washington You know drivers. when you're driving on like a two lane highway and there's two semis going 61 or whatever one's going like 62 and he's making the pass. It is, Seattle is that, only Subarus. <laughs> Just slow. Go, go. With like REI go, stickers. Go, go. <laughs> the trees are growing faster than this. <laughs> Move, please. I just, it drives me insane. I just They're just so nice. I think what it is is they're prepared for rain at any moment that they're like it I, I might have to slow down. They're not nice. Seattle people are not no, nice. No, no, they're nice drivers. Yeah. Like they're like, "Oh, everyone's just going along." They're not nice drivers cuz if you fly by them at 66, <laughs> they look at you like you're breaking the land speed record. 
Like your uh, oh, hydroplane Dusty. on Lake Washington. I, it's just it's just the depression and the gloom. It's like it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there might be something to that. Like it's just slow drive. Get to the there darkness. when I get there. Yeah, yeah. It's it's just a slow drive into the darkness. There you anyways. go. There you go. Okay, the look that the downtown Seattle barista gave you mm. when you threw a plastic water bottle backwards. Yeah. Into the trash can. Yeah. And made it at the coffee shop was just, she just wanted you to die. Yeah. Just for, I just, I just did a little toss. <laughs> just a little toss. Yeah. Well, we waited for our coffees and yeah. she was like, ugh, I, this guy. She I, couldn't handle the toss or you weren't recycling? No, I definitely recycled. Oh. Are you kidding me? <laughs> she just Are like, you kidding why me? would you ever throw yeah. anything ever? What am I going to go into why? a Catholic church and rip on the Pope? <laughs> I'm not an idiot. It's the main religion up there is recycling. <laughs> recycling and Subarus, baby. I, my favorite, I love so much when I walk into a coffee shop and I see a mean, judgmental barista. You're in for a good cup of coffee. 100%. It's going to be mm -hmm. so good. Hopefully, <laughs> you see some hair that kind of looks like your shirt, maybe. Yeah. It's going to be fantastic. Mm -hmm. Oh, they, if you walk in and they don't say a word, you're about to have the best cup of coffee of your life. But they say it all in their face. They say it. With their eyes. You are lucky that they're open for one. <laughs> you can't believe that you landed in the 70 minutes that they're open today. <laughs> they hate that you're there. They, they're furious that you brought your kid. They offered your kid a dog treat. <laughs> Because that's and to what, wait outside. <laughs> that's what they have. They're like, does your kid want to go lick from the water bowl that we put out? <laughs> That's for them. And you offer, you you ask for non fat milk and they laugh because as if they serve dairy there. Yeah. There's no dairy no available there. And it's, oh, it, and that's all over. If I walk in and I say, Barista, say, hey, how we doing? I'm storming out. I'm going to burn your building down. Why are you even open? What is this, the 90s? Do you not greet me. What is this, a coffee shop with couches where we're going to sit here for four hours? <laughs> And draw or whatever they did in the nineties. Poetry. Ugh. Yeah. No, give me that mean barista, baby. That being said, bitter barista, smooth coffee. That's what I want. <laughs> that being said, we didn't have the best coffee in Seattle. Seattle's not the coffee city that it used to be. Yeah. It is not the coffee city that mm. it used to be. It is. Um, it's. I mean, Portland still is. You know. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's just. Seattle's an interesting place. We had so much fun in the Northwest, but Seattle is is just not punk rock corporate anymore, and it really hasn't been since, like, 2000. Yeah. Because the grunge era, Cobain died in 94, and at that point, all the big grudge bands, with the exception of Mudhoney, were pretty mainstream at that point. They were big, big, mm -hmm. and you just cannot fully be... A cor you're a cor it's a corporation city. Starbucks, yeah. Microsoft, Amazon, Boeing, Amazon. I mean, you are the corporate corporate city. <laughs> like, yeah, you you're. It's it's just not the punk rock city that it used to be, and it is. And there are L Capitol Hill. Absolutely, is still a punk rock city, and uh, and there are elements of it, but it is it is much more like a Chicago now, where you're like this is a big city. And it's got these elements. It's got its cool neighborhoods and everything. Um, but it's, you know, it's, again, it's the corporate city in a lot of ways. L listen to the, what, what four companies you just said a name. Okay. The software company, the coffee company, the airplane company, and the world's company, Amazon. Yeah. They, that's, I mean, come on. And I'm forgetting some big ones. Is it Adobe based it's there too? Adobe. Google has a yeah, ton Adobe's of offices. Meta has there. a uh, ton of. Yeah, yeah. Google has built a ton there. of offices up yeah. there. I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy. At least Portland has the, uh, you know, the uh, properness to put Nike outside of outside of the downtown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that being said, yeah, they can't handle that much corporation. Yeah. yeah. Sniff of a <laughs> yeah. There are there are really we so we were up in in Tacoma for we did Tacoma for four days. Tacoma is is not Tacoma is a real has a real come up since we've left. We it's not 
like I went to high school there. Yeah. It's not like a destination city. No. Um, no one's like, I'm gonna go take my family to Tacoma for four days. No. But that's what we did. But if you happen to be in Tacoma, <laughs> you could have a good four days. Yeah. We had a blast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Common Grounds Coffee. Yeah. We went to Common Grounds. Mm-hmm. Uh it been downtown there. Really good. Uh as good a cup of coffee as anywhere we found in Seattle. It was fantastic. It's true. It's yeah. True. Um what and I'm not just saying that because they recognized me. But honestly, I should get recognized in a couple coffee shops in the South Puget Sound area. Um, yeah. I loved Ice Cream Social. I, ice Cream Social I, down at Point Rustin. Point Rustin, that's all new to us. New it's to us, yeah. probably 15 years old. That was amazing. Big so that was like the best dairy-free ice cream. Oh, my. It's the, you've easily the best dairy-free ice cream I've ever had. So good. Mm-hmm. Ice Cream Social down at Point Rustin. They have multiple locations, right? I That's think so now, to. but yeah, that was we, their original. It, we went, yeah. It's so funny when you go to places with your kids, you just kind of know how to have a little more fun there. Like we went to the whole built out Point Defiance area. We didn't go to the zoo, but we, we did the free zoo, the duck pond. Yeah. Oh, you know, there don't were need, deer. There were deer. There were deer, ducks. There, there, were were ducks there were turtles. We climbed a tree. There they don't let you climb trees at the zoo. There you go. They should. Yeah. Be a monkey exhibit. It would be a hit. Oh, they have one of those at the San Diego Zoo, but where you can climb a yeah, you tree. look like a monkey or a koala. Yes, which those Wait. are two different species. Okay, but it's kind of in between. Do you climb it's, or do you? It's hang by the koala. The it's by the. Koalas. They ha- you know, Andy. They I, have. I'm trying to remember. big tree, and that then you can climb. Kids it? can climb. I've well, never, fake, I don't remember seeing this. It's I was a fake big tree. I was just there, like not like a yeah, couple I've months never, ago. I've never I, seen or heard this. I I have pictures to prove it. I believe it. Um, Maybe. We did a lot of fall breaks. Because you know what's near there is a really great pl- bar. So that's why I'm like, I'm trying to like- Oh, by the zoo? Yeah, like I, yeah, yeah, the yeah. Zoo across from the baboons. Okay, so you I know like when you walk speakeasy. down- yeah. I, We went, this is funny. <laughs> we used to tell me about the punk rock museum earlier and I was looking up where it is and I go, oh, look, it's near a tiki place. And you, what was it called? Frankie's. You're like, oh, Frankie's. <laughs> this guy, he has, this guy can find the tiki Amazing. bar. Amazing, amazing. So it's, uh, yeah, we, we went to Fort Nisqually couple of history buffs. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just, like, ah, we're just putting the pelts on. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, Real history like, buff. It's really important for us to teach history to our back kids. In time yeah. And, and that was just a priority for our family. The kids are like, what's this about? You're like, it's from the past. <laughs> it is. Uh, the nice thing about being a couple of dum dums like me and you <laughs> is that we're learning it with our children. You're like, well, ah, I think it's uh, pelts. I think there was some trading. It was a settlement of sorts. It was beaver trapping, but it was uh, humane. Yeah. <laughs> it, it seems like they might have had a friendly relationship with the Native Americans, or at least that's what's being told here. I'm not sure, but let's climb this tower. <laughs> Look at the view up here. Let's go see the guy pounding the iron. He's making a <laughs> he's making a sword a for some reason. Here. They got yeah. a blacksmith here. <laughs> Got a lot of vintage shopping they, with uh, antiques. We went to some of the haunts that you know, we antiques, did. Sandwich the old shop haunts. Because I used to run Point Defiance. Yeah. And I went to Iowa. Not run like she was in I charge ran it of it. She at Parks Re- and Rec. She physically yeah. ran it. She mm-hmm. physically. <laughs> and the, yeah, there was an the antique sandwich shop is still alive. Right. So good. Took the kids there. We went to Dorky's downtown, the arcade. Yeah. These arcades, because mm-hmm. the, uh, the the vintage arcade is on a real comeback right now. A retro And uh, yeah, it is the cheapest date in town with your kids. We $40 cash. You ever you ever roll into one of quarters machine and drop a 20 in there? I remember being, I remember going to Godfathers when I was a kid. And my dad would give me a five and I'm like, well, I own this Godfathers. <laughs> You just gave me five dollars in quarters. Come that around, your, peasants. That was your babysitter. Maybe I'll flick you one here so you can go play the 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 driver one with that. Uh, they had the, the the where they had the three wheels where you could. I don't know. Remember the game? Off road. Off road. <laughs> off road was so fun. Off road cruising USA. Cruising USA. That was later. Yeah, you later. Know. But off road. Yeah. You stand. And it's four. Oh, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Off road yeah. was a lot of fun, and you, uh, you, yeah, it's they're a lot of fun. You can drop it, and then they had like they'll have uh, you know some old timey sodas, some old timey beer. You can drink beer out of a can and play the Simpsons arcade, greatest arcade ever, greatest yeah, arcade game ever. Simpsons and Ninja Turtles are Since, like known uh, as two of the- those Simpsons Ninja Turtles. I would say the original Mortal Kombat. 
Mm-hmm. Marvel versus Capcom. Yeah, original Street Fighter. Or Street, Street Fighter, Fighter 2. 2. Yeah, yeah. Street Fighter 2 is great. And then Marvel versus Capcom was a pretty mm-hmm. great. Those are kind of my five. Yeah, I would say yeah, that. And are... they always have those five. Yeah, they're always. Uh, I mean, you can go way back. Obviously, Pac Man, Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong Jr. is an underrated game. Those games are so hard, though. They're so hard. Yeah. The real vintage ones are like actually like, yeah. really difficult to win. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Have, did you go to the Pinball Museum in uh, Vegas? No, I didn't. We, we, we drove right by it. Yeah, but yeah, no, yeah. I yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, it's, it's real dumpy, but it's. Uh, yeah. Again, it's kind of you got to pick and choose in it, Vegas. It, I I you know, highly recommend everything. Highly recommend retro arcades for like a solid two to three hours because kids are into it. You know. Yeah. yeah, I think there's one in like South Hill Mall. That's our and friends went there, and it's a hundred and fifty dollars yeah. cheaper than Dave and Buster's. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I like that. Oh I like that. And then mm-hmm. what we do, now Seattle is not the punk rock city that it once was, but I will say, I mean, it still rules and Seattle is a great food city. And mm-hmm. we, I had not had Seattle teriyaki in a while and we went twice and I could have gone, I could have done breakfast yaki. No I problem. Know. Throw an egg in there. Oh, oh yeah. Have you found fantastic. good teriyaki in San Diego? We've not. Uh no yeah not really I haven't gone looking. Are you a big for teriyaki it. guy? I mean I I do love it. Um, yeah like, I mean do as you make a, teriyaki on? as a Filipino I have yeah. a whole skewer regiment that I do. Yeah, but sure. so like there's you know sure. realms mm-hmm. you know yeah. that I dabble in a metaverse of teriyaki yeah. if you will. Yeah, I think that Seattle to me is is much much easier to find a butter uh, plate of teriyaki than a good cup of coffee anymore. I think so. Teriyaki mm-hmm. city. Which sign yeah. me up. You know what? The world has plenty of coffee cities. We need mm-hmm. more yaki cities. Am I allowed to say yaki? Alternative yaki? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. give you a specialty <laughs> yaki uh, Yeah, yeah. Shop. <laughs> it is, uh, whoo. It is so good. This oh, is uh, an organic soy. Uh, it yeah. comes from a uh, farm here oh, off of the it's an it, ocean And you farm. haven't had teriyaki in a while? Because yeah. growing up in Seattle, mm-hmm. you would have teriyaki twice a month. You yes. know, uh, mm-hmm. but when you have it once a year, once every year and a half, Oh, and you eat it, and then wait. oh, and then the yeah. rice, and then the side. Oh, the so good. Yeah. <laughs> Would you, you say it's the In and Out of Seattle? Hmm, it's not as iconic. Sure. You know, I mean, Dick's Burgers is the In and Out of Seattle. Sure. Which Obviously, is, I'm crossing foods here. But. Yeah, 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 sure, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. There's it's like it's, the Mexican food. It's the, the Mex- Mex- it's the Mexican. There we go. It's Mexican the Mexican food. food of Seattle. Okay, yeah. very much so. That's if you're that's comparing good. it to San Diego. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love it so much. Mm-hmm. The Thai, the ramen. I'm gonna. I'm coming in my ramen era right now. You know, yeah. Took me uh, kids love- thirty-eight years of life to get into noodles. <laughs> the kids, the kids love the dumplings. <laughs> I'm always eating it. Like, have you guys? You guys had ramen? It's unbelievable. <laughs> and I was like, "What? Are you just getting into ramen?" I was like, "It's it's everywhere right now." Like, yeah, it's been pretty popular for thousands of years. <laughs> well, remember, pho kind of pho kind of came first. Pho was big, uh, and uh, but ramen. Yeah. I mean, they're still. You know, it's fad food. But was it had an era? Food. I feel like ramen is kind of. What do you think? Yeah, it's, I mean, you're more the foodie. Yeah, there's mm-hmm. definitely like ramen. Ramen's on a kick right now. Ramen, ramen has a lot of ramen, ramen has, has a lot of heat right now. Yeah, a lot of heat. <laughs> they got a because they have a really strong Resurgence. Japanese culture tie-in. So there's a lot right. of like really cool ramen spots because they're pulling Are you in Seattle. Well, in, let's say in San Diego for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. There's a couple. Same with Seattle. Seattle's originally a yeah. Japanese fishing town. So, yeah, yeah. And so there's just like some really like oh, this is like a hip ramen spot that can be yeah. a thing now. Yeah. I haven't gone to like a cool pho spot. That's true. No. It's like it's like that is true. There right? aren't hip pho spots, right? Yeah. You know, so it's like there's. I think some of these food genres kind of like yeah. jumped elevated. on. They elevated it. Pho really they... tried to do the name thing. Yes. What the pho? Yeah. They, yeah. Like that. Mm-hmm. The pho was like this is our thing. You we know, are the f word pun food genre. As a half Asian, I don't know what it is about us, but we love the we love a pun <laughs> with like with something like that. It's just like like let us walk and roll was a Chinese food oh, place. Oh, walk and I used roll. To go to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let uh, us walk and roll. Uh, walk two and yeah. one. One pho spot was called the best uh, fucking. Soup? Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't have to like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, we had what the pho. What the pho was a big one. Pho you was one of them. Uh, there was it was it was a it was a thing kind of popping up all over the northwest right. there mm-hmm. for a while. But they didn't get into the hipster thing like mm, like the cool spot right. where there is a couple really cool ramen spots. Ramen totally. spots are a little cooler. They kind of yeah. took a page from sushi. Yes, You're and right. that's kind of what it is. You're I mean, right. 
Yeah. Yeah. They wow. did. So Nobody's it's kind of so. You know, that's a, that's a, <laughs> this is an important podcast. <laughs> yeah. Gentrify your food, people. If you yeah. want to succeed. <laughs> If and you want to fi- thirty dollars for an entree, all of them, if and all of them are big in the U district in Seattle right now. This mm-hmm. U district has had such a nice come up. It's the food is so good. The vintage shopping is amazing, and then all the good spots too. Still not a lot of great coffee. Hard to find a good cup of coffee in Seattle these days. Mm-hmm. It's just a lot of old coffee shops. It's a lot of we were made in '94. And it feels like it. Now, is it punk and purist to not let alternative shops come in for that reason? Because they kind of hold down like Probably, that. Probably, but like, that's not as good. You're right. <laughs> it's not very, they're like, they're, it's just, I can see what you mean by that. It's like, yeah. it's kind of like the living room here in San Diego where mm-hmm. you're like, okay, yeah, this is punk and purist. Yeah. And right. awful, or Lestats, I used to run Lestats. You're like, yeah, yeah this is like they a have- bunch of guys playing D&D. And they're here for six hours, and, and they have a thousand menu items. Yeah, yeah. and so it's not its own genre. Yeah. yeah, and it's important. It and I'm I'm all for it. And I hope your business succeeds. The actual cup of coffee that I want right now does not taste the way I want it to taste. But that I, in some ways, I see your point. That's the most punk rock thing. Like we don't really care if you like it. Yeah, <laughs> right. We're not here for. Yeah, quality. they're like they're like. Well, back then it wasn't that good either. Yeah, yeah. Well, the hipster <laughs> coffee shop is like the hipster coffee shop is. A little more like, you're lucky we made this for you. And you're like, I am. You're right. I am really glad that you made this for me. Thank you so much for being open. For honoring my palate. Yeah. 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 Um, I just wanted to throw out there about Seattle, um, the Mopop Museum. Oh, yeah. We took the kids. Have you been to Mopop? No. It's great. Um, It's worth it. Did you ever go to the EMP? I don't know if you've been. No, the, the music much. experience. No. Yeah, yeah. So Same they kind thing. of transitioned. They rebranded. Rebranded. I've only been um, to Port Angeles. I did some oh, video wow. work up there. That was fun. Oh, that's cool. Mopop yeah. is awesome. They've um, got some really cool exhibits. Joel was hyped that they have the one of uh, MF Doom's masks. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it is. Yeah. really cool. Really, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, really fun. And then they just happened to have this uh, exhibit, like stop motion um, of Coraline, mm-hmm. and our nine year old. Nerds Loves out. Loves Coraline, yeah. And Coraline. Yeah. And they had like everything. Mm-hmm. Everything. Mopop is worth a stop. Insane. For sure. All the sets and, yeah. and the dolls and stuff is I, crazy. Yeah, I never went to it back in its original kind of heyday of like EMP. Like I remember when I it went, opened. Like, once. They did like a big yeah. music festival and like Metallica mm-hmm. was there and stuff. It yeah. was big. Yeah. And it's much more excited to the Museum of Pop Culture. So you walk in, it's a lot of old movie stuff. They have one of the Ring Wraith swords and I'm like, oh, cool. They have a lot of stuff. They have a lot of stuff, yeah. In exhibits, yeah. Yeah. The they, kids, re- the teens really like the horror. They have exhibit. a horror section, which yeah. is pretty cool. And I love that. Lots of props. Lots of costumes. cool props. The horror movie stuff. Not, yeah. Not, not, not the horrors of the world. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> horror. Uh, they have like words there, yeah. Lots of like Wizard of Oz costumes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The they, lion thing was there. It yeah. was really cool. Yeah. They and had the whole they, section on. Um, fantasy that was really cool i liked right. that but yeah. still the grunge stuff still a big guitar area it's 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 kind of a merge of a pop culture museum and like the rock and roll hall of fame mm-hmm. and uh it rules and the the, the, the caroline ex- Car- coraline, coraline was insane coraline if you just nerd out on coraline which i don't and then the which- seattle center at large has just changed so much in the last 20 years they have this amazing playground yeah that i was dying to let because the- claire had never been to Washington State. Right. That wasn't built. So we uh, did that. Of course, she got all up in the fountain, got right. soaked. Uh, we walked to Dick's Burgers. Um, it was yeah. great. If it you, was so great. If you go to Seattle in July when the Major League Baseball All Star game is in town, you will think, well, this is the greatest city in the history of cities. <laughs> And for those <laughs> that five days, it is it is unbelievable. It was so nice. It was magical. And we planned my trip in Tacoma, where I knew I could sell some tickets and I could make enough money to go to the home run derby. <laughs> we broke even, <laughs> and we went to the home run derby, and it was. I it's listen. I go to a lot of live sports, and I remember when the the All Star Game came to Seattle in two thousand one, and being like, I would do anything to be there for this this is inc- and it was the year the mariners won 116 and each era was rookie of the year and mvp and it was incredible and we kind of it was it was awesome man i will say going to now stadiums during um 
the all-star game in the home run derby they sell general admission so you don't get a seat and there were times where you couldn't move in the stadium and i was like i don't like this at all oh yeah but it was pretty yeah. magical and julio did you watch the home run derby no the seattle mayor that was in it julio set the single round record for home runs 41 in front of like his hometown crowd awesome it was just fun because it's uh it's major league baseball they know how to put on a show and uh you know it was um between that and the switch for a concert, a couple religious experiences for me <laughs> <sighs> this summer. So, anyways, we uh, we've uh, we've got to reset for two and a half days and go do some laundry, and then off to the south we go, baby. That's right. Let's go have a third religious experience and go see Graceland. All right, let's do it. All right, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Uh, all the best. All right, bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to that episode, everyone. I want to give a special shout out to our As Essential As Oils patrons. That's our $25 a month and up patrons. Thank you guys so much for your support of the podcast. Absolutely. We've got Avril Griffiths. Adam Bush. Allison Nelson. Bonnie Galindo. Carrie Teague. Caroline Crimmins. Code to Grow. Courtney Eibling. Dem Aris Diaz Stevens. Dave and Melissa Cox. Dave Hoagland. Isaac Teron. Jason White. Jennifer Ashley Downs. Jordan Cowan. Juliana Smith. Lori Amos. Matt and Sam Slosdom. Nathan and Jennifer Merritt. Nicole Caraz. Rachel Wilson. Rachel Kennedy. Robert and Nellie Capen. Stephen Mena. And Tiffany Payne. Thank you so much for your support. It means the world to us. Thank you. Thank you.